Starts right now. New at noon, a chase ends in a standoff in Frio County, and DPS tells us it all started after troopers tried to pull the driver over. Garrett Berger joins us live from Frio County. Garrett, DPS says the driver had no choice but to stop because of, what, car trouble? That's right, we're on 472 in Bigfoot, Texas, and behind me you can see the DPS vehicle still along the road. They're blocking the car that actually broke down at the end of a chase. Now, we talked with DPS a little bit earlier. They tell us at around 6 a.m., a DPS trooper tried to stop the driver for a, for a traffic violation somewhere along I-35. They were not specific about where or where this happened. But they did say the driver tried to evade through various parts of Frio and Medina County. Eventually, she had to stop here because her car broke down. Now, the woman reportedly barricaded herself inside the vehicle. We don't know again for how long that happened. But at some point, she got out, tried to walk away, and she ended up shooting herself. DPS, a DPS spokesman did not have the information on whether or not that was an ac accident or intentional. But she was rushed over to a hospital here in Frio County. We have not received any updates on her condition at this point. We are told that she was the only person in the car, and we don't know exactly what she was running from. But even now, six hours after that chase began, you can see that, the, that this scene is still active. We've seen troopers start to leave in clumps every now and then. We're not sure how much longer it is going to it, is going to remain active, but parts of 472 are closed. So if you're traveling out in Frio County, be aware of that. Live in Frio County, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. The cause of a deadly fire at a high rise apartment building so far is a mystery. Fire investigators still looking into how it started overnight in that building on North Flores Street near West Travis. Katrina Weber tells us it also left several people looking for a new place to live. There was nothing anyone could do but watch and wait as San Antonio firefighters did the rest. Those crews rushed in after 1.30 this morning when they got a call about fire inside the Villahermosa apartments. People who live in that downtown high-rise had rushed out. We just didn't know what to think because we were still half asleep. David Estrada woke up to the sound of a fire alarm. He was on the fifth floor but wasted no time getting downstairs. We really didn't smell smoke at first, but then when we came down, we saw the smoke. And then uh, we were just standing out here. The trouble in the 300 block of North Flores was on the third floor, an apartment with flames and smoke coming from it. Firefighters also found a man inside who had suffered smoke inhalation. The victim, who was in his 60s, was rushed to a hospital but died. Fire crews carefully took their time making sure the fire was out and trying to minimize the property loss for other residents. While most people here were able to go back to their homes, firefighters tell us that there were some apartments that did sustain damage, and those people will have to find another place to stay. Smoke and water got the best of their homes, but firefighters say management at the apartment building is helping them to recover. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman on her way to work ended up getting pinned between two vehicles after a driver hit her north of downtown. That's according to police who say the woman had just parked near Dallas Street and Brooklyn Avenue this morning when she was standing behind her car. And that's when another driver hit her. Officers say the driver was distracted for some reason. That person did pull over. She tried to help the woman. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Outside with live cam, I'm going to guess it's going to be a little humid today with that nice rain we had yesterday, but the temperature is nice. The temperature is really nice. Honestly, this morning it was absolutely beautiful. We had dew on the ground. Temperatures were in the 60s, but all of that turned into humidity. It is a humid, humid afternoon. Take a look at the satellite and temperatures. The morning clouds eroding. It's 81 degrees at the airport, 76 in Kerrville, 78 in Yavaldi, 82 in Del Rio, where we've started to see complete sunshine and a little bit look closer around the metro area. Again, those morning clouds up in the hill country have dissipated. It's 76 in Comfort, 77 in Bandera, 85 in New Braunfels already, and 82 at JBSA Randolph. For the rest of the day, it's going to be mostly sunny and warm. We'll be getting up to about 87 this afternoon for the high. Sun's going to set around 830 and it'll be a mild evening with temperatures falling into the 70s. You might be wondering, hey, when can I do some yard work? We've seen so much rain recently. I've got to look at that forecast and of course a check of the aquifer and the pollen count coming up. David.
Thanks, Sarah. This noon, an Amber Alert still active as police continue to look for two missing children. Two-year-old Zyla Fox and nine-year-old Camille Brown Sykes were last seen Thursday afternoon on the southeast side near Dollar Hyde Avenue and Pecan Valley Drive. While police have made an arrest in the case, they are now looking for 28-year-old Kadia Fox in connection to the kid's disappearance. If you have any information that can help police, you're asked to call San Antonio Police at 210-207-7660. The regular legislative session was barely over before Governor Greg Abbott called for an immediate special session. He said many crucial items remain unpassed. Abbott says the special session would include focus on cutting property taxes and border security, but it will also include adding $1.4 billion to give Texas schools a safer environment, requiring armed security at all schools and providing access to mental health care for all students at all schools. Meanwhile, the Texas House has named 12 members to prosecute the case against impeached Attorney General Ken Paxton. This will happen in the state Senate. It's a Republican majority board of managers made up of seven Republicans and five Democrats. So now the Senate will hold that trial. It's unclear when it'll happen, but it'll be before August 28th. Before that, though, leaders are going to come up with some rules for the trial and then present them to the Senate on June 20th in order for Paxton to leave and never be elected to office again. Two thirds of the Senate would be needed to approve all of this. Paxton accused of bribery and corruption. Right now, his duties as attorney general have been suspended until the Senate trial is over. In Washington, D.C., lawmakers able to strike a tentative deal to raise the debt ceiling. Now President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy are working to win enough votes to pass that bill. ABC's M. Wynn explains how they're facing resistance from both sides of the aisle. With the members of Congress and the American people facing the prospect of a catastrophic default less than a week away, the race is on for President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to secure the votes to pass their brokered agreement to raise the debt ceiling. But I feel very good about it. I've spoken to a number of the members. But the president is facing resistance from progressive Democrats who oppose parts of the deal, including new work requirements for some receiving federal food aid. Representative Pramila Jayapal on CNN. This is saying to poor people and people who are in need that we don't trust them. A White House official telling ABC News the administration has called more than 60 House Democrats since this Saturday. I think the president uh, fought hard for a balanced deal. And as I am hearing from members, they generally believe this is a good deal. House members returning early from their Memorial Day recess are now reviewing the 99-page bill that would curb government spending and suspend the debt limit until 2025 after the presidential elections. The agreement also claws back $30 billion in COVID relief, rescinds $20 billion in IRS funding, and ends Biden's freeze on student loan payments in August. McCarthy is also facing pushback from his conservative members, arguing the bill doesn't cut hey, enough spending. This deal fails, fails completely, and we will do everything in our power to stop it. Senior leadership aides telling ABC News they're going to need moderate lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to push the deal through Congress. Ahead of a vote teed up in the House for Wednesday, the House Rules Committee is meeting today to discuss the bill. Out of the nine Republicans who sit on the committee, two are already no votes, meaning this may need Democratic support to pass the legislation onto the floor. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Still coming up, the Canyon Cougarettes have something no other team in the state tournament has and how it could help. Coming up in sports. A local student saw a problem, so got to work. She was able to rally her classmates together so they could clean up their high school. We're going to introduce you to our latest great grad next. For the past three years, it has been difficult for businesses and organizations to get janitorial positions filled to pre-pandemic levels. So one local senior student took the initiative to combat this challenge she formed a cleanup club. Alyssa Cole shines a spotlight on this morning's great graduate from NEISD Johnson High School. Meet Tolu, the inspiring teen on a move. 
And if everyone has a different gift that's unique to them and they're all utilizing it at their full capacity, then we'll be able to do so many more things. She goes to Johnson High School and every day she finds different ways to give back. Every Tuesday and Thursday after school, we go and we help the custodians for one hour by using cleaning supplies and um, just cleaning the school because we have a shortage of custodial staff. She's one of Northeast ISD's shining stars known for fostering meaningful environments using compassion, humanitarianism, and science. I thought, hey, you know, I'm gonna be isolated during COVID, so I might as well um, try and make some new friends by starting my own club. And this club is also a volunteer club. For instance, we had, like, we talked about literacy being an issue in San Antonio, and so we had a book drive. So we raised a lot of uh, books, sent it to an orphanage. Their group making a small but mighty impact, collecting and donating 400 books. She also volunteered as a tutorer, helping teen refugees from Ukraine learn English. To Lou, this is in recognition of being the Student Volunteer of the Year at Johnson High School for 22-23. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone around campus knows <laughs> Tolu's actions are rooted in empathy. It's what led her to accept an invitation from Northwestern University in Chicago. I plan to major in neuroscience and then become a doctor afterwards. After graduation, she plans to keep serving, but in a different capacity. There is also a prison education reform club that I want to join um, where they help like all the prisoners learn how to come out of prison once they're um, finished with their sentence. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Love those great grads. They are doing some great things. And Sarah Spivey, very busy yesterday. Today yeah. she's taking a little break. Yeah, I'm enjoying those fair weather cumulus clouds outside right now. Beautiful day, a little on the warm side and humid side. There's no change in the Edwards Aquifer. And as we look at the pollen count, this is really not good. Molds are very high after the storms that moved through yesterday. By the way, the ground's got to dry out today, so not the best day to do any yard work. But as you look ahead, you know, you got the green light. Go ahead and do that yard work for the remainder of the week, even the first part of the weekend. It's Sunday, though, that we start to see our storm chances go back up again. I'll have those details coming up. So this morning, driving to work, coming out of the hill country, it's always cool when you see the fog below some of the hills. Yes. It's like you're looking oh, yeah. down on it. That's sweet. Absolutely. I was looking at the ant hills that have been created by all of the rain. <laughs> so you, kind of you know, I there's was, another. That's the other <laughs> hill. I was doing a little bit of gardening the other day, and I emptied out one of my flower pots. Uh -oh. and sure enough. Oh, there are tons of ants there. So, hey, you know, at least we've got some good rain. I'm never going to complain about the rain here in San Antonio, especially after the years of drought we've just been through. Take a look right now outside. Beautiful. Those cumulus clouds you see there, they're called fair weather cumulus clouds because they're not growing very tall. They won't be able to produce any rain. They just make for a picturesque Toy Story like clouds there off in the distance. 81 degrees, winds are calm at the moment. Dew points are higher, dew point at 67 degrees. That's a little icky, that's a little sticky outside. Taking a look at clouds and temperatures, seeing those uh, skies clear. And so as we head into the afternoon, we're going to have mostly sunny skies. It's still 76 in Kerrville, where clouds were a little more stubborn earlier this morning. But where we've had tons of sun, like in New Braunfels, it's already 85 degrees. 80 at Rio Medina, 82 in Hondo and 82 in Pleasanton. All right, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the rest of the day. This afternoon as you're planning uh, to uh, head out for the afternoon commute, we'll be looking at highs in the upper 80s, right near 87 this afternoon for the high. Sun's going to set at about 830 and it's going to be a pretty mild and clear evening. Temperatures will fall into the low 70s by midnight. I mentioned the drought. I want to show you here. This is a look at the current drought monitor, but it does not 
account for the rain that we saw yesterday. You can see that there's exceptional drought still across parts of the hill country. We'll get the new drought monitor on Thursday, but look at the rain that fell yesterday. Bullseye right over that area of exceptional drought. In near comfort, five inches of rain fell, and we had a corridor of one to three inches of rain that pretty much fell right along that I-10 corridor in the northern part of Bear County. This is all going to really help to further put a massive dent in our drought. I will be very interested in seeing what the drought monitor uh, is updated to on Thursday, and we'll be sure to show you that here on KSAT. Looking at the satellite and radar, it is fairly quiet around San Antonio, but you can see there are a few coastal thunder showers developing. Those may make it as far inland as Carnes County later on this afternoon, but we do anticipate it to stay quiet around San Antonio, and it's quiet across the state of Texas. So if for some reason your Memorial Day travel plans were halted yesterday because of the storms in the afternoon, we are looking at good travel all across the state of Texas, all because of a ridge of high pressure that's going to be moving overhead in the next couple of days, and that's going to put a halt to our rain chances before a low pressure system, which is right over Los Angeles, moves in over the weekend. So when we look at rain chances again, little to no chance for rain for the remainder of the week by the weekend and especially on Sunday. That's when we'll have a few isolated to widely scattered showers and storms. We've still got a few days to refine the weekend forecast, so please make sure to tune in uh, throughout uh, the week as we adjust that forecast. Looking at your forecast for tomorrow, though, waking up in cloudy at 67 degrees, but those clouds will quickly erode to mostly sunny skies. We'll be at 81 at noon, 88 for the high temperature temperature tomorrow and then putting it all together for you in the seven day forecast looks like temperatures are really going to be pretty steady near 90 degrees feeling a little bit warmer because of the high humidity. All righty y'all coming up. I've got to look at May rainfall for the month of May. Impressive totals across South Central Texas about time. Yep. Thank you. Still coming up. Rangers continue their hot streak on the diamond. We'll have some highlights for you and Miami Heat avoid history, the really embarrassing kind of history. Coming up. The New Bromel Canyon softball team thrives on success this time of year. The Cougarettes had made it to the third round or better at each of the last eight playoffs. Really enjoy those trips to Austin. This year, Canyon is making their sixth all-time appearance at the state tournament and their first since 2019. But this year is very unique because the Cougarettes are the only team in the state tournament that is still undefeated. I don't think so. Um, there's at least one team <laughs> that's already there that's, that's probably not gonna worry at all about our record. So um, I don't think that changes anything uh, as far as our preparation and the way people are gonna perceive us. Um, I, you know, it's nice to have, it's nice to, to have that on the record books going in, but I don't think it's anything that changes anything. Here's the matchup, 31 and 0. Canyon goes up against 37 and 7 Colleyville Heritage in the Class 5A State Semifinal. Coming up Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock, winner goes to the state championship game on Saturday. Major Leagues, Rangers opening up a three-game series on the road in Detroit. Top five, no score. Corey Seager about to change that. Boom. He unloads. That's going deep to right, and it is gone. A three-run shot, 3 nothing Rangers. Seager added another hit. He singled in the seventh, knocked in another run. Rangers went at 5-0. It was just a matter of being patient at the plate for Seager and the rest of the Rangers hitters against Matthew Dow. He was good early. Um, we battled and just couldn't do anything against him. Um, then had a couple of good at-bats there. You know, Mark six the walk, and then unfortunately he got on the board. It's just a product of the lineup. You know, you have guys on, you have more chances to drive runs in. Um, and that just is one through nine, you know. Everybody's swinging the bat well, taking their walks, um, just moving the baton. And Astros trying to keep up with the Rangers. Still comes a weird sound, doesn't it? Astros keeping up with the Rangers. They're home opening a season... Uh, Three-game season with the Twins. Bottom seven, bases loaded. That's Jose Altuve. Remember, he was hurt beginning of the season. Boy, let that one fly, though. That was a grand slam. Houston was up 5-4, but the Twins down to their last out, and Royce Lewis ties it up with an RBI single. And then Jose Abreu ends it all in the top of the 10th. Astros fall 7-5-10. to five and 10. 
All right, NBA playoffs and the Miami Heat are moving on to the NBA Finals, avoiding the worst collapse in NBA history with a huge Game 7 win in Boston. ABC's Will Reeve was there, and he's got the highlights. The Miami Heat, the lowest scoring team in the league. This morning, it took longer than expected, but the Miami Heat are in the NBA Finals. They did not blink. The Heat are going to the NBA Finals. I think a lot of people can relate to this team because, uh, you know, sometimes you have to suffer. It's off the smart for the seventh game. After coming all the way back from a 3-0 series deficit, the Celtics started Game 7 off on the wrong foot. And he twisted an ankle, perhaps. He did, the left one. Boston superstar Jason Tatum tweaking his left step. ankle. He tried to Euro step around him, Vincent, just a little mm. bit late, rotating over. Jason Martin, free. And the Heat, led by 26 points from Caleb Martin, one of three undrafted Miami starters, avoided becoming the first team in NBA history to lose a playoff series after being up three games to none. When these moments come, I'm, I'm ready for them. It's over! And thus, the NBA Finals are set. The Denver Nuggets, led by two-time league MVP Nikola Jokic and resurgent superstar Jamal Murray, will host Miami in Game 1 Thursday. The Lakers all sorts of trouble when he busts. All right, here's a look at the matchup coming up Thursday night. The Denver Nuggets hosting the Miami Heat to start the seven-game series if they need to go that far. 7.30, and guess what? You can see it live right here on KZ12. A lot of people excited about the Nuggets finally getting in after coming from the ABA, kind of like the Spurs did yes. back in 99. I like the Nuggets on, yeah. in this matchup. I root for Denver. Shoot, yeah, why not? All right, new today at 5. Add homeowner's insurance to the list of things that are costing you more. Rates are up, so are your premiums. Coming up at 5, the main reason that is happening, and more importantly, 12 and Your Size Marilyn Wards has some things that you can do to trim that bill. A one-year-old baby, just one of the victims of a mass shooting in a South Florida beach over the weekend. That shooter who killed five adults and injured four children has not yet been found. ABC's Rena Roy with how the shooting started and who police think did it. The search intensifying for whoever is responsible for unleashing this chaos on Memorial Day. Surveillance video released by police shows people running for safety at the beachfront in Hollywood, Florida, Monday when shots rang out. I heard like, pop, 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 like about six, seven shots. Everybody start running. Everyone is praying like it was terrifying. The gunfire breaking out around 630 in the evening as beachgoers were enjoying the holiday. We received a call of multiple people shot when officers arrived on scene. There were nine victims with gunshot wounds. Five adults and four children were shot, including a one-year-old. You can see police and Good Samaritans treating victims, all of them in stable condition. An eyewitness says he saw several young men fighting in front of the stores lining the boardwalk when one pulled out a gun and started shooting. The suspected gunman seen in this surveillance picture wearing a yellow sweatshirt. Preliminary investigation reveals that there was an altercation between two groups that resulted in gunfire. Right now, we do have one person of interest detained, and right now we're also searching for an additional suspect. This was the 262nd mass shooting this year alone, according to the Gun Violence Archive. And in Chicago this weekend, police say at least 47 people were shot in different incidents, nine of them fatally. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The teen accused of crashing a U-Haul truck near the White House is asking for the court to delay his hearing. Sai Versheth Kondula's detention hearing was set for today. However, his attorney filed a motion to reschedule it for Friday. Kondula's lawyer is asking for more time to prepare release plan proposal. Prosecutors argue the 19-year-old is not a U.S. citizen or permanent resident and could be a serious flight risk. Abdullah is facing a charge of depredation of property of the United States in excess of $1,000. This after officials say he crashed a U-Haul truck into a security barrier near the White House last week. The judge has not weighed in on the requested extension yet. Researchers may have unlocked the brain abnormality that causes babies to die in their sleep. It's called sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS, and it is the leading cause of death for babies in their first year of life. The cause is a bit of a mystery, and a research, think, research team rather thinks it may have found the key. A team studied 58 babies who had died of SIDS. They compared them to a control group of babies whose causes of deaths were known. 
they found an abnormality in the brain receptor of the SIDS babies, a part of the brain that causes us to wake up and gasp when we're low on oxygen. That abnormality could interfere with that kickstart, causing those babies to continue to sleep and eventually stop breathing. There is growing evidence that building muscle strength is good for your heart. It could even lead to better outcomes for people who have heart attacks. Researchers in Japan studied quad muscles, the front of the upper thighs, in more than 900 older patients who were hospitalized because of a heart attack. They found the risk of another heart attack was more than double for those who had weak quads than patients who had strong quad muscles. The findings have not yet been published, but were presented at the European Society of Cardiology's meeting this month. In a similar study back in 2016, the same researchers found that muscle mass in your upper arms could be associated with rates of surviving heart disease. You don't have to drink alcohol to suffer liver disease. It's estimated that a quarter of all adults in the U.S. have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is an illness where excess fat builds up in the liver. Many people don't even know they have it, but CNN's Mandy Gaither has who is at risk, including a lot of San Antonians, and how you can find out if you're one of them. It can affect anyone of any age, including children. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is common, but silent. Many don't know they have it. The more severe form of the disease can cause major health problems. These patients are at increased risk of developing cancer. They're also increased risk of progressing to cirrhosis and even require a liver transplant to be able to treat this. Dr. Blanca Liziola Mayo with Mayo Clinic says this disease is more common in those who are obese and people who have metabolic syndrome are at increased risk. That means the patient has three or more medical problems linked to obesity like high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels or high triglycerides. I think the most important thing to remember about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD is that it's reversible. Which is why early detection is key. Mayo says those with two or more risk factors should be screened. The condition tends to run in families and Hispanic Americans are disproportionately affected. She says the disease is also showing up in a growing number of children. Treatment includes being healthier. I see it as a te team approach where all the family needs to really work on this in lifestyle modifications so and making, making sure that we follow a healthy diet and remain as active as possible. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The Mayo Clinic says patients often ask about supplements to cleanse the liver, but it is not recommending any of them. Only the liver can cleanse itself, and there is some research that those who drink black caffeinated coffee at a moderate level get some benefit. It's always coffee. I drink coffee. Coffee's good. Coffee's bad. I had my black coffee this morning. All right. Oh, that's that's why you're how I all take my coffee. Wide-eyed and ready to go, huh? Yeah, you gotta be working these morning shifts. <laughs> you gotta be ready to go. If the storms last night didn't wake you up, maybe maybe this forecast, this nicer forecast will. Take a look outside right now with live cam. It is a warm and humid day all across the Alamo City. 81 at the airport, 83 at Stinson, 81 at Kelly, and 82 at JBSA Ranch off near Converse. So the low 80s right now, but this is a look at the forecast highs for the afternoon. It'll be near 88 in San Antonio, 87 in Hondo, 91 in Del Rio, 91 in Eagle Pass, and 91 in Catula. A little bit closer around the Alamo City, 84 in Bolverde, 87 in Hondo, 86 in Canyon Lake. We're going to see more of the same today, but coming up, I do have a look uh, at uh, our forecast over the next several days and a look at how much rain has fallen over May. It was a pretty rainy month. Those details for you in a few. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. A new movie is hoping to lure in some large audiences by tapping into a bit of nostalgia, offering something new and something old. How the music in the Little Mermaid remake mixes both. And rough seas turned a vacation into a nightmare. How passengers are describing the trip and what the cruise line is saying about it this noon.